Well, hello and welcome back to Michelle Holden Art, um, intuitive abstract art journaling and discovering your true art one layer at a time. And in this week's video, that's exactly what um, we're going to do. I was recalling um, in a few videos in the recent past that I didn't have um, or you might not have um, some really nice uh, black on white will do today and then of course uh, white on black will be next week. I just wanted to create a short video on how you can explore. How am I exploring while I'm making my collage papers? Um, the first thing that I consider and learned along the way is in the different types of paper you explore on and what each surface does. Either it absorbs it, falls apart, or hopefully it doesn't. But um, So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make just marks, lines, and patterns using very simple tools. Uh, you can use, go around the house and discover uh, things that would make an interesting mark. I just grabbed some things from my table here. Uh, this is a, uh, a bamboo skewer, sort of the longer one. Shorter one might create a different effect. So it has a pointy end and a small circle end that I think I want to explore. A very thin brush a regular brush that I use my sprinkles at. And that's another thing that I've been forgetting to do. Um, I caught another artist doing that on the collage paper and go, why, why don't I, why am I not doing that? So that's what we can learn from other artists too. Um, borrowing different um, processes, techniques, and then making them our own pencil, just a very square brush, and the carpenter pencil too, because it's wide and thin. So we're going to, and as I've said before, that's as far as the planning that I have been, uh, uh, taken my planning today. Um, I'm gonna show you the different papers that we're using. This is uh, like a tracing paper, so it's not transparent, but it's translucent. Here's a single piece. This is tracing paper, which is your regular Strathmore tracing paper. It has, it's stronger. And uh, I'll leave the card in the video. Um, I think I have a short video and a long video with the series of small abstracts that I made. And I use some of this and wow, is it ever cool. And I also use palette paper, which is even more transparent. This, uh, so that's the tracing paper. This is your deli paper. So it's dry wax paper, meaning there's a dry side and there's a wax side. So, and that's what this is, okay? And then there's some op opaque papers. Um, it feels a little shiny, so I think this is laser paper because I have a laser printer. And you could use copy paper, just standard paper from a sketchbook, anything. And also, my favorite, as I like to use for warming up, I use a lot of newsprint paper in my work. So, let's start creating. I think the first thing that I like to do, I've used ink in the past for my um, lines and patterns, but I think I want to use a combination today. So I just grab this, any little cup will do, Dixie cups, as you can see, and you've seen me, I use that in my pattern. But for now, I just want to focus on line line and pattern. Also a craft brush because when the paint is more fluid it can create a really cool um, pattern. 
So we don't have a jelly plate printer today, even though I do have one and I'm going to show you that, show you how I make mine in the future. Um, um, today we're just going to use a very simple approach to making our own collage that's authentic to us, meaning our marks on it. So I'm gonna take the Liquitex Basic Mars Black. Oh, okay. And I'm going to put it in. Now, this is the Mars Black. Yes, I have an iridescent one too, so I was hoping I wouldn't get that mixed up. We're just going to put a little bit of water in. And. I'll stir it up with my all. Now, if it's too fluid, add more paint, of course. I don't think it's one to one. Um, it's two to one, two paint to one amount of water, or even less, because the paint's already fluid. And then you'll also need some heavier uh, paint. Um, or not. We'll just we're just gonna test it today. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so you put that to the side. Also get yourself some paper towel, have everything around you so you can just go with the flow. Uh, less thinking, more feeling. Alright, so I think whatever calls you. I really love so that's really wet. So as it becomes more dry, and I'm trying not to think so much. This is a little thick up here, but that's okay. Now how we're gonna make these our own is once we make one pass, passing layer of marks, we're gonna set them to the side, let them dry, and then we're gonna come and put another layer on them. My collages usually have three or four layers on them. Let's try some pattern. And you don't even have to do the same pattern for the whole piece of paper, which is usually, you know, eight by 10, A4, because you might not like it. Or, you know, you just might want to try something else. It's not that you don't like it. And I find rushed strokes have less character than more, I don't know what the word is, using, just taking your time and really feeling it and getting into the zone, even though, so how could I, so that's enough of these, okay, so I have some of these, how can I do the same, similar stroke, change them up? Well, let's go in a different direction. We can put them closer together farther apart, longer, shorter, change the size like it's dashes, some sort of code. really dip that in that time. Oh, you see that created a bubble, but that's really cool. I really like that. And since that's a little fluid, we
also have the thicker. And I'll just put that to the side and I'll move my, I'm using my glass palette today just because I just needed, I thought I might need more. So let's move that over. All right. Keeping a stack of these is really handy. Great for mixing as well. Little Dixie cups. Now I'm going to go back over. Some things might, you know, this is okay. But what I've discovered is and I don't worry about going over the edge with this. So as you can, as you can see, you can explore with uh, objects, uh, stamping, mark making. And let's just use some drawing. And I'm just using my newsprint paper right now just to start warming up. See, so that really dipped that, but wow, look at the difference. And you might want to try the opposite hand, of course. Okay. And we'll let that dry. But before it does, I have this idea that I could use some mono printing with marks that I like and start pressing them on my transparent paper. Of course, it's going to smoosh it, but that's okay. Okay, so that didn't make a big mark because the newsprint paper is really, it, it really absorbs quickly. So what might we do? You can use some palette paper. We're going to come back to that one. This is called mono printing. So whatever mark you feel like making. So on the palette paper, which is very waxy, it's not going to dry or be so, well, of course it's not gonna dry right away, but it's not gonna be soaked in the paper. So you'll get your mark. So that's really cool. I'm gonna let it dry and then we're gonna bring it back, bring it back and I'm gonna add another layer to it. And then when this dries, your palette paper, you also have another piece of collage. And we're going to, we're not finished with that one yet either. So you just keep going Now, what if we marked or painted directly on the newsprint paper, uh, the, the deli paper? So I'm just dragging it, added a little water. Now 
Now I want those areas to be dark. I know I'm sort of going over what I just did, but that's okay, because that's what we do. That's what we do here. We learn to let go. See, I'm liking that. It's a little more wet, because you want, you want that to be open to see the layer underneath, because once you add the medium and put it on top, it will become a little bit more transparent. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do with this one. So here's the tracing paper. See, as you can see the marks, see how transparent it is? It's already getting marked up and that's okay. So I wanna use my usual circle. But we're gonna go, now that didn't turn out, but that's okay. Because when you use collage, your usually tearing just sections of the piece anyway. So these are in a row. I want them that way. And I like how they're all different and they're not quite straight. I want imperfection. So I know the paper's lifting there. So I'm going to do half just to save you from watching me. <laughs> I also, in my series behind the scenes that I'm working on, some larger canvases using the same techniques needed some blue collage. So I'm going to use the light blue fluid. I'm just going to put some below the black hair and I'm going to make the same circles. Dexter's snoring. It really, we got a lot of snow here, so we were out shoveling most of the morning and it was past his belly, so we had to do a lot of jumping <laughs> to move around, so too funny. Okay, so now that one's in there. My studio dog. So I'm just going to use the other end. I think it's okay. It's just a piece of pipe. You can all, oh, and I was also looking at paper towel uh, rolls. There's, there's a variety of them that different thicknesses, different sizes. It's, it's endless. Okay. Now let's see the effect. What would be the difference if they were blue? Oh, I love them. I almost love them more than the black ones. Now I'm dripping water because I had to clean the pipe. So next time, but that'll dry. Next time I'm gonna make sure it's thoroughly dry. And this is a difference. So they're the same shape, but they're blue. So they are different and you can see when you put them at different distances, just the slight changes you make once you discover a mark or a shape. This is an op uh, not an open shape. Well, it's not a solid shape either. Putting them in different arrangements creates a different energy, different type of feel. So that's 
that goes with the kind of work that I like. And as you go down, you can gradually make them farther apart. So that will dry and that'll look really, you can see my arm under there. Very cool. That's the Strathmore tracing paper. Now I'm just gonna try just a little bit of the bamboo skewer. Okay, not really making a big voice here. Interesting. So let's go with the thicker paint. And I'm just, I'm not giving up yet. So I'm gonna put it on its side a bit more. And I really love these subtle scribbles. If you just need a little bit of contrast or to add, or your instincts call you to, oh, look at that. This might all be all you need and just a little piece of it. Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. I'm going to use now you might not have this this is a thing that you have to order um, I'm just showing you a variety of different marks and then I'll show you them all together in the end in a photo um, these little bottles that have these very fine ends where you can really make some really nice marks you might want to just there we go I've not used it directly on. Ah, and that's interesting. See how it breaks up. It means I'm moving too quickly. I like to go one pass with the brier. So look at that. Still fine lines, but look how different one side is to the other. And look how transparent that is. But to top it off, let's do some sprinkles. Oh no. Did I not even hit? Oh, yes, I did. Good. For a second there, I didn't think I hit play. <laughs> but I did. That's awesome. Okay. Moving on. Okay. There's something about hitting um, the scissors which causes... And see all the spatters? They go everywhere. It's the angle that you're, you know, holding them. We'll get back to the blue in a minute. Just needed a little bit more. And I just cleaned my desk, to my table too. <clears throat> this is very wipeable. I'm lucky that way. Okay, I think that's it. We'll let that dry. <clears throat> now, the third, uh, or oh, the fourth paper is, I do believe, no, this is still tracing paper. I thought it might be tissue paper. 
Let's give it a try. All right. We are going to use the Catalyst Wedge, which isn't anything that you might find at home, but here's a solution. You can take some cardstock, of course, and just do your own teeth triangular cuts into it, or even an old credit card. Do the same. I'm just curious to see what this will what this will do. Always asking yourselves questions. I wonder what would happen if. Okay, so I'm going to use just this one. Pretending I don't have a catalyst wedge. Okay. So it doesn't have a lot of oomph, like stiffness. So I'm going to hold it a different way. There. That worked. So, I'm calling this Exploring Line and Pattern with Transparent Papers, Part 1. Next week, we, I'm going to demonstrate how you might use these in different ways. So what I did, I added a little spritz of water there, just to the paint it was starting to dry. I don't know why I probably went, oh, look at that, what a difference. Okay, I think I might wanna just add a little bit more here. And as you can see, since it's just cardstock, very thin, it's wearing out, but it's just like a one-time deal, and then you can just throw it away. Okay, I'm liking that. I may even come in here yeah, just to break up those open spots with a little more black. Perfect. Okay, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that once it dries. Okay. So now that those pieces are dry, and I'm just going to have a little quick wipe up of the spatters, and I always just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Usually helps. This is a plastic though. It's not a Tom, Tom Holtz background mat or whatever. I like just white, I like it just to be plain. I'm not liking the reflection so much. There we go, okay. So let me show you one of my paintings with similar collage um, that I used. So this piece, and I'll leave the card to the video, the journey of, I think it was three paintings. Um, I hope that is the title. But as you can see, as there is so many layers on this, and it is the a 12 by 12 uh, board, and I just loved what happened here. Mind you, it, it still was a tissue paper with this, you know, with a mark left, uh, but with my um, jelly plate printer, but as you can see, the transparency of the other layer coming through with the marks, that's the thing that I say that only once you start doing it, you'll go, ooh, that happens. And then you, you, you know, mark that as a thing that you know, and that even though we don't plan using the intuitive um, art process, but that is in your schema which is in your, you know, your art filing cabinet. <laughs> I 
back there in your brain and uh, in your in your heart, sort of whatever, wherever it resides. And then that comes out, oh yeah, so you can let those things happen. And here's some scratching. Um, this is paper, this is burlap. And this was also, nope, that was opaque. See the line? And you can have uh, the same piping that I used here. Um, it can go on collage, and then you can put it directly on the work and then use that as a difference or continuation. So the line, so I really wanted to emphasize line and um, I really love this series. So more to come in the future. So I'll use one of these. Um, the other one is still a little tacky. I'll use a transparent one. And this one. So what I wanted to do is to show you how you can build up another layer on top using white on black. And I'm gonna show you with this I'm going to show you with a gel pen and with a Posca marker. If I can find them. Oh, yeah, here we go. So the first one is the Uniball white. And I don't want to think. I just want to do sort of like a Semic writing. I know it's there is a style for it, but I, this is what I call my mark. So... It's my form, it's my way. And I know it's not coming all the way through to get this pen. I haven't used the white, I've been using the gold so much. But any kind of mark. So that's that. Now let's compare it with this one. Oh, much better. And hear the metal piece making a metallic sound, kind of scratch. And I'm not going to brayer over this. If you look closely, I'll show you in a moment. I'll show you a sideways view if I can. And I love even the white on the white because when you use it on a piece of artwork, it will dissolve, I mean, melt into the other layer. I think I didn't like those, so I'm gonna just, so I get more use out of this piece of collage. Thank goodness, I so need it. See, as we change and evolve in our intuitive art process, uh, our collage needs to come with us. And you can see, I don't know if you can, uh, it's raised, so it's going to dry in a, in a real interesting uh, texture. So, really liking that. I think for this one, I'm going to combine the blue and the black. And that's exactly what I thought it might do, and I love it. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to the paint right here on the right. I think I'll add a little bit more. It's the Liquitex fluid. And leaving that little peak might be interesting, it might not, but you don't have to use that. Remember, this is a piece that, and I like to tear my collage. I like a torn edge. So you can use a credit card, any kind of um, old, you know, old 
Tim's card. And look at that. It, it, really cool. You can also buy larger sheets of the newsprint, the, the newsprint pads, and you can just work solely on just sheets, just doodling away, and then that becomes a piece of collage. I think I'm going to do that next week. Stay tuned. I have so many of those, and then if I've used some resist, which I think I'm going to do, so keep that as a surprise, and then I stain them in tea and coffee, uh, along with some other text that really speaks to me or really has to do with the work I'm working on. Now, see how you can even make one section more opaque? Now, let's say if I was experimenting with a color or just blues themselves, right? I might use two different blues and I might say, well, gee, what if I put these two together? What might happen? See, that's way more interesting than just that one. Now, mind you, it's another layer on top. And you don't want to cover the whole thing. You want to just let some show. And if this can take it, which I doubt very much, if it was a different kind of paper, then you can scratch through. Just make some, just marks, just to break that up. And now, hmm, I think I'm gonna use some black sprinkles. Even though I just cleaned up that's okay. They have to happen. Oh, it's a triangle from that last technique. And you might even go as far as Sometimes I like to go make them farther apart as the eye moves across the page. Now, as a whole piece of collage, you know, this is sort of okay, but you remember, you're just going to use sections of it. Hmm, very interesting. And I'm sort of liking the more random circles, not always in a row. And that was my response to what I saw here. And I really like that because it means I'm paying attention to what's going on. I'm in the present moment. Okay. Okay. So that is just a quick... Um, demonstration as to how I make just some of my collage papers. So let's look at what we made. So we made a beautiful opaque three layers or four, counting the sprinkles, four layers on that. This one, I'm just going to just do line. And I like that black. I don't want to always do the same thing. It sort of reminds me of water. It has the same energy. And that's what I like to, it's how I like to think. And I even like it up here. Who knows what that'll look like. Okay, so that's another one. We 
we've got our transparent circles. We've got a fabulous transparent line here, but I think, I think it might just need a little something. Not too much. There. Okay, that one. This is very thick. That's gonna be really interesting. And you might wanna really make sure you dry them thoroughly. Two different very fine lines, but very translucent. And our, just our plain, I think, just to finish off today's video, I'm going to put some blue across. Wow, that's really cool. I'm just going to leave it. Oh, no, I'm not. lid sort of gets in the way so you have to hold it with your hand. I'm excited to see how these are going to turn out in a piece. So I hope you enjoyed my little technique demonstration video this week, the first of many to come. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you like the content. And also, joining my email list will really keep you informed uh, as to when my new course, new free course, will be out and ready in the spring. So you might want to sign up um, just to be in the loop for that. And as I said last week, I really wish I wrote more of my, uh, of my thoughts, feelings, and emotions, things that worked, my colors, and all of those things so I can take what I've learned and move forward in my intuitive abstract art journaling. So if you want one for free, sign up, and it is a free PDF download. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.